I'm really delighted, honestly, I'm really delighted to introduce the first of the planned seminars which aim to deliver innovative and accessible solutions to the challenges other people living with HIV are experiencing. The theme of today's seminar is health-related quality of life for older people living with HIV. And uh, as you know from the programme, our speakers uh, will be able to uh, dissect quite a lot about physical and psychological health factors which uh, prevent uh, older people living with HIV well. But, um, so as I said, I'm really delighted about this, but I hope that this would be an opportunity to tackle stigma and discrimination experienced by people living with HIV, but most importantly, this should be an opportunity to tackle stigma and discrimination faced by elderly people in general. So this is an opportunity to redefine discourses about age and aging. My concern is that because the topic of aging well with HIV is becoming a very popular and dominant discourse, there is already in the back of my mind, although I started by saying I'm really delighted, that shortly we'll have some sort of fatigue about hearing a lot about aging in HIV. Do get me wrong, I'm really happy that I'm here to talk about aging in HIV, but this is my personal journey, my personal trajectory, which at this stage, I'm not going to share with you because it's not that important. What is much more important is that we look at the consistency of these courses about ageing and how we can use this opportunity to really make sure that we are not using a language which is a very dominant language where we are thinking about healthy, visualise this, healthy, good-looking, fit bodies that they're kind of almost a template according to which we are then relating to everything else. And in health in particular, psychological well-being, but also physical health, is that how we all relate? And again, I want to stress, I would like to fake it and say that I'm much younger than who I am in reality, but that's how I feel. I feel really young. And I'm not disclosing anything about my real age. Some people here know my real age, but I'm just really not going there at all. I'm going to pause instead on the world of ageing more than on HIV and semantics. I think this is very important because there is a sort of almost political correctness about um, talking about elderly people. So my experience, my personal experience, I'm so self-centred that I end up talking about myself anyway. My experience uh, is that when the um, healthcare practitioners, they refer to me, they always talk about me as a, a very nice old lady who is doing really well. Now, I'm getting really pissed off with the old lady there <laughs> <laughs> for many reasons. But also the fact that I'm behaving according to stereotypes, old ladies and I'm stressing particularly the stereotype that women are carrying with them, all ladies are supposed to behave properly according to some set rules. So if women in particular, and my little talk is very much about women because another point of contention for me is that when we talk about aging well with HIV, we assume that there is this blob that everyone is aging well with HIV in the same way. Absolutely rubbish. Women have difficulties. Now, I just want to put a disclaimer. I know that this will be recorded. I'm not going to talk about my sagging tits and things like that. So don't, don't worry about that, which is something that I usually share in other settings when I talk about But this is about aging, and it's really upsetting for me. It is. That is who I am. So I don't want to talk about other things, so I'm not particularly grateful in a way that age is uh, you know, following me in a way that then my body doesn't respond to what I would like my body to do. Then there are instances in which my body is performing really well. Chemicals sometimes are helping me to perform in the way in which younger women would perform. I'm not talking about menopause because it's too early in the afternoon and some people might find that kind of squeamish. But that's, again, another discourse that is never, never heard of when we talk about aging well with HIV. What about women and menopause? 
I'm not describing symptoms, again, simply because it's too early in the afternoon. It's a nightmare. Okay, I'm not cheering you up particularly. But <laughs> what is, I think, quite important uh, when uh, I go back to what I said at the beginning, that we have a very good opportunity here, is that we can talk about elderly people in a way that deconstruct prejudice and stereotypes. Elderly people, irrespectively of their status, should have agency, should have power, should have a voice, not by comparison to the younger ones. In so many different ways that it will take too long for me and you will get bored if I list all the reasons why. But there are two reasons that are particularly striking for me. The experience of living, forget HIV for a second, is something that the elderly, whoever they are, have, and the young ones do not have yet. And that's something that should be cherished. As you probably gather from my funny accent, I'm not Scottish, I come from the Mediterranean, feeling sorry all the time because Scottish weather doesn't really make me look uh, as pretty and as young as I would like to, meaning that we in uh, Southern Europe, we look after the elderly in a different way. We use the elderly and the, <clears throat> the culture, sorry, I should stand, but I just find it difficult to stand. We use the culture of, uh, and the, the knowledge of the elderly much more, in a much more productive way. So for instance, we wouldn't use words about survivors, when we think about HIV, I'm so sick of hearing uh, long-term survivors with HIV. I don't feel guilty because I survived. I haven't done anything better than anybody else who didn't survive, so I don't carry, but that's me really mean in a way, I don't carry any guilty trip with me. I'm just here because I'm here. There are no met metaphysical reasons or any particular philosophical, spiritual reasons why I'm here, and many of my contemporaries uh, are not. They haven't done anything wrong. And I think it's important to remember this all the time when we talk about living well with HIV and aging with HIV. Those who are not here today would have liked to age well with HIV, but they're not responsible for dying young. We forget about this because we're so happy celebrating that we are uh, still alive, great, and I'm going to live for another 20, 30, 40, 50 years, I think, I hope. Going back to what I said at the beginning and the importance of today, let me just say something which deviates slightly for, from today's topic, except that most of my contemporary research is about the elderly. And I want to, my research is uh, at the moment focusing on two specific stands. One is the experience of uh, elderly men, 60 plus, um, in terms of historical abuse and interpersonal violence. And the other big chunk of my research is the experience of uh, elderly people in prison. Now, you say, well, this is a seminar about quality of life uh, for people living with HIV. Who cares? Well, we should care because the language we use when we talk about elderly people is so disempowering. So there is no difference between aging well with HIV, aging well in prison, aging well because you're surviving trauma and the experience of interpersonal violence is a traumatic one. I'm going to soon move to the next speaker, but I am, because I want you to kind of keep in mind and be fresh about something, which is the language is very important. Let's make sure that the language we use from now on when we talk about living well with HIV and aging with HIV is a language which is all encompassing. All the experiences are good experiences. Some people here heard me talking uh, forever about uh, the so many communities they're living with HIV. Will is smiling, but it's absolutely true. It's not just one community of people living with HIV. There is not one experience of aging well with HIV. Gender and class, without turning this into a lecture that uh, my uh, students would hate already, gender, class are very, very important when we think about aging. 
Men, for some reasons which pisses me off tremendously, sometimes they manage to age well, but they can afford more things to make them age well. And that's one thing. Class is very important. Aging well with HIV is and has to be related in the context of class. Whatever is the definition that we want to give, you know, if you have money, you age much better. Not only because you can afford to go on holiday or buy an expensive Prada handbag, which will make you very happy, talking about myself, self-referencing again, but because you can do a lot of things, your diet will be better. You can do a lot of things and you don't have to worry about surviving. Most people who are aging with HIV are surviving, they're not living. So let's not kid ourselves. That is very important. So as much as we talk about, uh, you know, important psychological techniques that we should adopt in order to live better, we need more money to be alive. Some people have managed to keep jobs, but most people living with HIV do not have jobs, but they're still aging with HIV. And the, the way in which they're aging with HIV is pretty shitty. You know, it's all very well the healthcare practitioners say, well, we should have a much healthier diet. Healthier diets in Scotland are really expensive. You have nothing. Sorry. You know, there is no good food here. I'm just looking at my partner because we import everything from Italy. <laughs> and Nathan knows because when he comes to see us, you know, it's, you have tomatoes that taste of nothing and so on. It's absolutely true. I'm just making this quite trivial, but it's very important. When we tell people you need to do more for yourself so you can maintain a quality of life, we need to make provisions. Oops, now I'm directly talking to politicians. You need to do something. You need to do something. You need to do something so people can all live well and age well with HIV because the majority of people cannot. And also, and really honest promise, I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish by saying something which is particularly close to my heart because I'm a woman living with HIV as well as the chairperson of HIV Scotland. But I'm also a feminist scholar. I'm an academic. And all these bits of myself are always combined into one, uh, that's my self definition, amazing uh, being. And my amazing being tells me all the time that it's very difficult to be a woman aging well with HIV. This is a very male orientated environment within which we are supposed to age well. Also, this is an environment where the voices that we hear, I will be talking tomorrow more, so I'm kind of again self-referencing myself about whispering voices adult male voices within HIV are the voices that are heard the most. Well, they can shout louder because men do have uh, louder voices most of the time. I'm taking myself out of the equation because I can shout, but that's just one tiny example. The majority of women are not allowed to shout because they have to look after their children or their grandchildren, or they're still struggling with a, a low paid job and so forth. So it's very important that within this uh, array of possibilities that we're gonna have when we start talking about uh, aging well with HIV, we start listening to different voices. Every single voice is as important as the next one. But in particular, women voices are very important. Not because men are not, it's because women voices haven't been heard as much before, specifically when it comes to aging. So thank you very much for listening to me. I think it's time for Nathan. Questions, right? Oh, nice, some questions. Okay, but, yeah. Okay. yeah. I think, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause. Thank you very much for that, uh, Dr. Polacek, that tour de raison. I think every aspect was covered, and I think your point about language is uh, incredibly well made. Um, 
HIV does not define someone as, as part of someone along with a range of other attributes and aspects and understanding class, gender, income, and all these cross-cutting issues um, are, is so important, not just in discussions around HIV, but in all public policy. It's, it's a challenge we still face of getting out of silos and thinking more broadly and holistically. Um, I would maybe just take one issue with Scottish food. I think Scottish cuisine has a, a, a fairly a, a good reputation internationally. However, I, I do recognise there was a time where Scotland had a very healthy cuisine because it was mostly all fish and oats. And who knows, perhaps after 31st, 31st, 31st of October, we'll be back to that again. <laughs> um, anyway, political points scoring aside. Is there anyone who would maybe just any sort of initial questions, initial reflections they would like to offer to Dr. Polacek? Don't all put your hand up at once. I'm going to have to start picking people at random. Okay, well, there will be time later on um, to, to engage in the panel discussion later this afternoon. Um, so take the opportunity to maybe think it, to reflect upon what Dr. Politic has discussed. But thank you very much uh, for opening um, in, in a completely inimitable way. Thank you. Thank you.